Hello everyone, my name is uh, Vincent Vio. I'm product manager for Cubewise Code, and I'm here today with uh, Marius, who is doing on uh, his daytime, his consultant at the Swiss office, and during his nighttime and weekend time, he is the father of Tiam One Pi, the man behind most of the code behind Tiam One Pi. So we are here today to discuss about Tiam One Pi and all the different use cases. So first of all, welcome Marius. Thank you, and thank you for that kind introduction. You're welcome. So uh, maybe first of all, could you please uh, explain to us what is Tiam One Pi? Uh, yes, of course. Well, to put it in, in one sentence, maybe it's it's the bridge between two awesome technologies. That is Tiam One and Python on the other side. And technically, it's a bit more. It's it's the wrapper around the the Tiam One REST API. Okay, cool. That sounds interesting. But we we have already architect. Uh, perspective, uh, bedrock, hustle, like all these kind of tools already to um, interact with TM1. So yes. um, how did you come up with the idea of using uh, Python with TM1? Well, it's, um, I think that's also a personal story. Like when, when I decided to become a TM1 consultant in 2000, 2014, I already had a Python background and always, always enjoyed uh, developing in Python. It's, um, I've got to say, it's my favorite language and it always, always felt very natural to express my, my thoughts in Python. In, in fact, it felt more natural for me um, to express it in Python than TI, even though I'm, I'm TM1 consultant. But back then, um, back then there was no um, there was no bridge, there was no integration between Python and TM1. Um, that was 2014, um, and then um, the the TM1 REST API it um, it was introduced, and um, then suddenly there was there was a way to to bring these two technologies together. You know, so we could do Python things with TM1. We could, we could pull data, we could update dimensions, right? But then um, it wasn't on, on a really low level back then. When, my, when I first tried to pull it together, um, I, I would be doing HTTP requests. I would be sending JSON and parsing JSON. And uh, you got to know a bit about SSL and um, all these, these low level protocols like REST. And um, so I put a lot of thoughts into it and I started building like a, a package. And that, uh, that became the foundation for uh, for Tiam One Pi. Okay, so. so now all this kind of very technical stuff like authentication, now this part is handled by Tiam One Pi. Exactly. So you can focus on more on integrating with the other libraries and. Yeah, exactly. That's the thought that yeah. we we make that a community effort to to build all the like the, the the lowest levels and the foundation. We put that into Tiam One Pi, make it open source, and we see lots of people who are already contributing now. Uh, on the foundation, and then everyone who wants to build something with it, whether mm. being it a predictive model or something, some automation of TM1, they yeah. could use that foundation mm. and then focus on, on, what, on what they want to do where, where they can add more value, right? Yeah, exactly. That's where I wanted to go, go next. Is, uh, wha so what would, what would be the use case, use cases for TM1 Pi? That's a good question. Uh, the thing is, um, like if, if we, if we, when we talk to people and what we monitor, what people are using it for, um, I'd say 50 or 60 percent they're using it for data science. You know, mm. they want to calculate standard deviations or build predictive models, which is hard in TI or not to say impossible. Mm. And um, t Python can come in handy. So this is really what the, what the people out there are using it for. But I always always saw more in it. I always thought it um, you can do more with it, especially like in terms of automation, administration of the tier one server, um, mm. like. Orchestrating multi-instance environments, I think that's um, a big topic, um, or even expressing business logic. Um, yeah, you can do lots of stuff. Uh, indeed, um, I saw your presentation today at the Cubewise conference. Yeah. So it was about ma ma machine learning. So would you be able to give us a bit of a teaser or oh, summary, a quick, quick summary of what you discussed oh, definitely, uh, definitely. a few hours ago? Yeah, the thing is, like in, in Python, there is all these these predictive libraries for. Um, like classification or time series forecasting, and today we um, we built a classification model, so that we can uh, we had a little cube with loans in it, and we pulled them all into Python, and then we um, yeah we just we just applied some different machine learning models like um, random forest, or k nearest neighbors, and tried to find the loans that would default. Mm. Um, it's a, it's a typical machine learning topic, and I think it illustrated well 
um, how, how nicely and how easily uh, we can use these machine learning techniques um, on our tier one models. Cool. So hopefully soon we'll have a blog articles where we can share what you have done with oh. the community. Oh yeah, <laughs> sounds awesome. Um, so yeah, so data science, I think it's a hot topic. Like lots of people are talking about it. There are lots of products okay. uh, on the market. Some are free, some you have to uh, purchase or lease them. So yeah, yeah. Um, would you recommend to use a tm one Pi over these products? Or um, yeah, so w would yes. you recommend to use a, yes. a tm one Pi to start um, working with data science? I think there's. I think there's two good points uh, in favor of Python um, when you want to do data science. That's uh, the one thing is the ecosystem, right? It has um, a bigger ecosystem than many other programming languages, especially in data science, advanced analytics, and that field. Yeah, you said there are how many uh, libraries? Oh, well, I actually think? checked for the presentation. It's yeah. 180,000 free and open source libraries. libraries. It's yeah, I think incredible. That the key thing of Python is that you don't have to write all the stuff yourself. Yeah. You have already 180,000 project that you can, they are ready to use. Exactly. And some of them are well documented. Yeah. And lots of people are using it. So you oh. can just check on Stack Overflow and community. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really the good selling point of Python. And I think the other point is that it, like, it, it, it turns out to be now the, the, uh, the language of machine learning, but it was popular before. And mm. lots of people know it. And it's, it's one of the most popular language, and it has already been before. So there's mm. a huge pool of people who already know it. I think those are mm -hmm. two good points in favor of Python. Yeah, and maybe the last point is that it's free. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is free, yeah, compared, it just, uh, compared it, to other tools. It just yeah. costs you time, because you need to learn at the beginning. It does, yeah. But then it's, uh, it's definitely worth it. If you already have TM1, you can just start uh, straight away. Yes, yes, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, yes, uh, would you have other um, use cases a, a, apart from data science uh, for TM1 Pi? Maybe just quickly to wrap up? Um, yeah, like what I mentioned it already. Um, the, I think whenever you have multi-instance environments, you need to do stuff cross instance. This is where Python comes in really handy. Mm -hmm. If you want to synchronize cubes or pull move data dimensions over from one to another. Um, and integrate services, you know, like Salesforce or exactly. all these kind of platform which has API. Exactly, exactly. Like pulling pulling data into TM1, right, mm -hmm. from, from other systems. It's, a, it's also a very good use case. Cool. Yeah. So Marius, you convinced me. <laughs> now I want to learn how to use TM1 by so where where should I start? Uh, I think I think there's a lot of like um, a lot of material on the internet how to learn it. You know, there's there's really good. Um, I think even on YouTube they have some very good Python tutorials. Um, so if you want to learn Python, I think there's a, there's a big uh, big pool of, of resources. But then when it comes to TM1 Pi, it's certainly a bit less. But then um, you know we we published um, the TM1 Pi samples project on GitHub, which is 50 ready to use samples. That um, there's little scripts with TM1 Pi. Who, who show you what you can do with Python. Mm. I think that's a, that's a very good place to start. Just so you can download them? them? You can just download the samples and... Oh, yes, yes, exactly. You, you download it and you can play around for that. Cool. Thanks, Marius. It was very uh, informative and helpful. So I hope you enjoy it. And um, hopefully we'll see you uh, next time at the uh, next conference, All maybe right. in Australia, right. in Europe, or in the US. Au revoir. Au revoir. And à bientôt.